Hello, welcome to this high cut short clip on the subject of workshop drawing. There are several improvements in this area and I want to show you the first improvement by means of this little assembly. We can assign different types of use to different attached parts. Here as an example to stiffeners the type of use stiffener and to a reinforcement plate the type of use reinforcement plate. Firstly, this enables you to define the respective workshop drawing for the single part. Secondly, it makes it possible to generate different chains of dimensions depending on the usage via the stw dim setting.xml file. For the workshop drawing, that means that in the assembly area not one chain of dimension is generated for all attached parts, as done in the past, but separate chains of dimensions depending on the usage. As an example, a chain of dimensions for the stiffener and one for the reinforcement plate. In order to define the setting in the stw dim setting.xml directory, you can find the separated subpart position parameter. The way the chain of dimensions is generated depends on whether the parameter is set to 1 for separated, as seen before, or 0 for not separated, as it was in the past. The second improvement is the usage of dimensioning rules for sheet metal. I would also like to show that very briefly. The sheet metal has to be set up using parametrics. In this case of sheet along sketch, it means that the sketch has to have been created using parametrics. The respective parametric dimensions will be adapted in the workshop drawing and converted into drawing dimensions. In the workshop drawing, it should look like this. The third improvement concerns the dimensioning of attached parts. In the past, the dimensions have depended on the main part. It is now possible to create assemblies without main parts, for example in welded assemblies. The dimensions in the workshop drawing thus depend on the beam determinative of dimensioning. In the production drawing, it is the case that here, also, the dimensions depend on the respective beam and not on the main part. Whether only the first or also the second edge is included in the dimensioning is also determined in the stw dim settings.xml file. For this purpose, there is the subpart position parameter. This you can set to 1, only starting point, or 3 for starting and end point. Depending on what setting you choose, you might get changes in the workshop drawing. Another new feature is the option to go to the dimensioning setting, bores and boltings, and chains of dimensions for subparts to adjust that the first and last bore should be dimensioned. In the workshop drawing, the attached parts are dimensioned according to the bores. If there are attached parts without bores, as you can see here and here, the first edge would be used as dimensioning edge. Here you can also find dimensioning rules to define the type of dimension we get in the end.
Another important aspect to note is that if the described parameter is not available in your stw dim setting.xml, you can add this parameter manually. The fourth improvement affects the bill of material area. You can now display the assembly images in the Excel shipping list. When we create an Excel BOM for steel engineering, we can now incorporate axonometric preview images of the assembly. The report manager launches and eventually the BOM is loaded in Excel. The news here, as I said, is that we can now add a corresponding preview image per assembly to the shipping list. The way this preview image is depicted whether it's shaded, with edges, or hidden line, can be presetted in the BOM template. Okay, you might want to have a look at other short clips regarding the improvements. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.